Stepping into the role of a curator for the exhibition in Tender Peaks, Grace Unfolds, with Mitochondria Gallery has been a beautiful, beautiful challenge. It feels like I'm starting a new chapter. Mitochondria Gallery reached out with this idea and honestly, it's given me the push that I absolutely needed. The last few years has all been about artist management, artist business education. Curating was definitely a part of my world, but it took a backseat. So here I am, a mix of excitement, a bit of nerves, and a whole lot of anticipation. The artists, the gallery, they believed in me to help bring these stories, these narratives to life. And I think the navigation of what this exhibition explores is very, very important. And in Tender Peaks, Grace Unfolds, in collaborating with the artists like Lex Marie, Vaughn Davis, Kobe Dill, Crystal Yara Anthony, Ryan Williams, Lamont French, Megan Lewis, Demetrius Wilson, and Travion Payne. Within this exhibition, we're exploring the idea that within the tender peaks of our existence, those moments of vulnerability and significance, there lies the potential of for grace to reveal its most beautiful aspects. I've been exploring through the lens of myself and my family and my friends, how is at these emotional heights and peaks of life that grace has the opportunity to unfold. This grace can manifest as inner strength, as a newfound perspective, or even as that quiet resilience that emerges when we're faced with life challenges. It suggests that our most important growth and beauty often arise from those tender, critical junctures in our journey. And that is what this exhibition is about. As we learn how to have grace through these tender peaks, that's when we begin to reach the apex, the zenits of who we are. The artists have very gracefully and graciously explored this and allowed us to have a piece of their thoughts, a piece of their moment to tell a complete narrative through this exhibition. I'm Mariah Lise, the curator of In Tender Peaks, Grace Unfolds, and this is Dear Glory, where our practice is rooted in making the art world a lot less elusive and a lot more approachable. Now let's talk more about the art within the exhibition and let's explore eight lessons I've learned throughout this process. I wanna start with Lex Marie and how she explores the collective anxiety of a mother and how it stems from that deep-seated instinct to, to, to protect and to nurture a child. As you know, children venture into the world and they face challenges and they face uncertainties. A mother often feels this sense of vulnerability and powerlessness. This anxiety is heightened by the awareness that she cannot always be there to shield her children from life's hardships, nor can she control every aspect of their journey. In the face of this anxiety, you find grace through prayer, which becomes more than a religious or spiritual practice. It transforms into this therapeutic expression of hope and love and most importantly, surrender. Through prayer, a mother articulates her deepest fears and desires for her children's safety, their success and their happiness. It's a space where she can lay bare her anxieties and trust in them to a higher power or a deeper sense of faith, which so many of us call the universe, but what I personally call God. Prayer serves as this channel for releasing this burden of worry, allowing the mother to find a sense of peace and acceptance. It's an acknowledgement that while she plays a crucial role in her children's lives, there are elements beyond her control. This acceptance is not a sign of weakness or resignation, but a recognition of the natural flow of life and the autonomy of her children as they grow and they make their way in the world. This work is based with the collage of Bible pages and layered with that rainbow play parachute that we're all familiar with as children. And the title, man, the title struck me so deep. It was titled Covered, and it instantly and immediately reminded me of my grandmother's prayers. She also explores when a child, regardless of their age, turns to their mother of deep need. And this call can stir a mix of emotions and concern and empathy, a strong sense of desire to alleviate the pain from your children. The mother's role in this moment is multifaceted, of course. She becomes a source of comfort, a listening ear, a guide, and also this pillar of strength. It's not just about providing immediate solutions or relief, but giving a safe space to where this child feels heard and understood. This exchange is significant for so many levels for the child reaching out to their mother. It's an acknowledgement of trust and assurance that 
in their most vulnerable moments, there is someone that will unconditionally love and support them. And for the mother, it's the reaffirmation of her role in that child's life, a role that evolves but never diminishes in importance regardless of the child's age. This work is the weaving of those children alphabet puzzles in, in laced with uh, the, the telephone cord and it's titled Call Mama. I can't give it all the way so soon, so I'm not gonna share an image of it here. So please get in contact with us if you would like to get a look at Call Mama or please just make your way to the exhibition. Now, before we get so deep into all of the work, I wanna go ahead and share some of those key lessons I learned from curating this exhibition. Number one, collaboration is key. Collaboration isn't just beneficial, it's essential. Working closely with artists, galleries, and others ensures that the vision for the exhibition is not only maintained, but also enhanced. It's about creating a synergy where each party, each person, contributes their expertise and their perspectives. You have to allow the artist the space to work, but also be a gentle guide, leaning to a more dynamic and cohesive exhibition. In Tender Peaks, Grace Unfolds, collaboration meant aligning the artist's individual narratives with the overreaching theme and ensuring each work resonated with the collective story. It meant working closely with mitochondria to make sure that their expectations were met. It means collaborating and negotiating so that everyone has a mutually beneficial experience. Number two, flexibility in curation. Flexibility is the cornerstone to a successful curation. It involves adapting to changes, whether it's artwork availability, gallery space constraints, or thematic shifts. Being open to change and able to pivot without it rocking you ensures that the exhibition maintains its integrity and relevance. Even when faced with unforeseen challenges during the curation of the exhibition, Flexibility meant reassessing the layout, the narrative, to accommodate new works and new ideas. It meant stretching and finding balance, even financially, to make sure that the artworks got here. Number three, understanding the artist's market. Another crucial lesson in curation is understanding the artist's market, especially when you are working with a commercial gallery, opposed to perhaps a museum. And this understanding not only gives fair representation, but also guides potential collectors in making informed decisions. Number four, organization is pivotal. <laughs> Organizing an exhibition is like conducting an orchestra to be the most dramatic. Every element from the layout to the schedule needs to be in harmony. It involves coordinating with the artists, managing exhibition schedules, making sure each piece arrives on time and intact, and then displayed to its best advantage. Good organization sets the stage for smooth and impactful exhibition experience. Number five, understanding your audience dynamics. Knowing your audience and how they interact with art influences so many decisions. It's about anticipating their reactions, their interests, and how they navigate the space. Number six, balancing aesthetic and practical considerations. There's an art to balancing the aesthetic vision with practical limitations. It's about making compromises where necessary without diluting the artistic integrity of the exhibition. This balance is really crucial. Number seven, visionary planning. Having a clear visionary plan is essential. It's about seeing not just what's in front of you, but also what the exhibition could become. This vision guided me through the selection and the arrangement of artworks, creating a narrative flow that engages and moves the audience. Now, number eight, emotional resonance. It absolutely matters. Art is a conduit for emotions. And as a curator, tapping into the emotional resonance of each piece is crucial. You want to select works that not only speak to you, but evoke reactions from the viewer. This exhibition was heavily responsive, meaning the artists responded to a statement that I gave them. They responded to the theme. This emotional connection is what transforms a collection of artworks into a personal and collective experience. In curating this exhibition, we prioritize artworks that stir feelings of introspection, joy, sorrow, hope, and it was meant to create an emotional journey for the viewer, but also give you emotional break. Now, I wanna give you all a little bit more of a sneak peek of the artwork before we leave. I want you guys to become really familiar with Crystal Yar Anthony. But before we even go there, 
I want to recommend a book for you guys to read if you are looking to understand curating a little bit more. There's a book by Adrian Jarge called The Curator's Handbook, and it talks about curating independent spaces for commercial galleries, for museums. I've been having this book for a few years and I've referred to it over and over and over again. And I think that it's a book that you guys should pick up, even if you're an artist, to kind of understand the other side of things. Uh, let me know if you guys read it and let me know your thoughts. Now, Crystal Yara Anthony offers to the exhibition two contrasting yet interconnected works. The first digs into the depth of guilt in the context of global unrest. It's an exploration of the inner conflict experience when personal peace contrasts with the chaos of the wider world. Through her work, Crystal captures the emotional turmoil of enjoying personal tranquility while acutely being aware of global suffering. Contrasting this, Crystal's second piece is a celebration of joy, depicted against the backdrop of a beautiful sunset. This artwork embodies the pure, unadulterated happiness that life can offer. It's a reminder of those fleeting moments of bliss unattained by the world's troubles, where one is completely immersed, completely immersed in the beauty of the presence. When viewed together, these two pieces create a poignant narrative about the uh, human emotional spectrum. On one side, there's the weight of guilt, and on the other side, there's the unbridled joy of life's serene moments. Crystal's work embodies and asks us to think about how we grapple with feelings of guilt for our peace and joy and the turbulence that may be around us. This juxtaposition in Crystal's work compels us to reflect on our own emotional journeys. How do we reconcile our moments of joy with the awareness of even our own struggles, but more in the context of her work with the struggles of the world? Her works don't just present these complex emotions, they challenge us to embrace the full range of our feelings and our emotions, understanding that joy and guilt can coexist within us. There's a feeling of moral dissonance that comes with celebrating personal milestones or simple pleasures when the world around us seems to be in despair. It's like our own happiness is a betrayal of those that are suffering and neglecting the, the duty to alleviate those pains of those around us. The unfolding of grace is about finding the balance and empathy for the world, empathy for those around us, and empathy for our own struggles, but also compassion for ourselves. It involves understanding that your own awareness and contributions to global issues and issues in general are important. Denying yourself the right to personal joy and fulfillment is not sustainable, nor is it a healthy response. Grace here is recognizing that one can be a part of the world's solutions without sacrificing personal happiness entirely. And as one more peek into this exhibition, I do want to say that one of the most beautiful parts of this exhibition is the exploration of grief which is perhaps one of the steepest and most rugged of these emotional peaks. It's a mountain that so many of us are reluctant to climb, uh, fraught with the pain of loss and that absence. Yet, with this very struggle lies the potential for grace. As we navigate through the dense fog of sorrow, we gradually uncover strengths we never thought we had. This grace may manifest as a newfound empathy for other suffering, a deeper appreciation for the fragility of life or that quiet resilience that becomes part of our own fabric. It becomes a part of who we are. That journey through grief, while it's painful, can unfold into a more beautiful understanding of love and life and the interconnectedness of life and loss. The work is so personal, but so emotively transferable and transformative and so beautiful and so vibrant and full of color. This exhibition has brought up so many emotions that I did not know it would. You know, these past few years for me have been a roller coaster of emotions and I'm sure for you. So many highs and so many lows and we experience these in life. Even the lows are like at the highest peak. And Tender Peaks, Grace Unfolds, is the story of so many of our lives, told through the lens of the artists in this exhibition. It's about finding that balance, that grace amidst the chaos. You know, thinking back to Lex's work, it's that finding balance through having the faith through prayer to cover your children. Because what other defense do you have when they're in the world? As we wrap up, don't forget, in Tender Peaks, Grace Unfolds opens on February 16th at Mitochondria Gallery in Houston, Texas between 7 and 9 p.m. And there's an artist talk the very next day between 2 and 4 with the talk starting directly at 2.30. I ask that you take this as an opportunity to get into the heart of this incredible exhibition. If you want more details about this exhibition or want to discuss the possibility of you living with or collecting any of the works, just drop me a line at info at EliseArtGroup.com 
or reach out to Mitochondria Gallery at info at mitochondriagallery.com. Thank you so, so much for joining me today. And please remember, I encourage you to give yourself grace in the tenderness to find your own glory in the mundane, the extraordinary, and the emotional landscape of your life. And don't forget to give glory. Don't forget to give grace, to share, to uplift, and inspire. Together in finding and giving glory and finding and giving grace, we create a world that is a little more bright, a little more beautiful, and a little more understanding. Until next time, peace.